The main two concepts in this chapter fall under two words, electromagnetism and electromagnetic induction. In electromagnetism, we're going to be using an electrical current, which is the flow of electrons, to create a magnetic field. And in electromagnetic induction, we're going to be using a magnetic field to help create a current. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the first one, electromagnetism. So let's say I have a copper wire. Now you should know that copper is a metal and metals have delocalized electrons. All that means is that there are electrons flowing around the metal in no particular order. If we apply a current through this metal wire, that will cause all the electrons to move in the same uniform direction. When this happens, a magnetic field is produced around the metal wire. Now they might ask you to describe what this magnetic field looks like. So in the straight wire, the magnetic field can be described as circular. However, if you pay close attention, you can also see that as you get closer and closer to the wire, the magnetic field becomes more frequent, or in other words, it becomes stronger. So how do you describe this? We say that it is concentric. That means as you get closer to the wire, the concentration of the magnetic fields increase, and therefore it becomes stronger. The other thing you need to know about the magnetic field is its direction. So, to answer this, we can use Fleming's right-hand rule. In the right-hand rule, the thumb represents the direction of the current, which always goes from plus to minus. The fingers represent the direction of the magnetic field. So let's see if we can work out the direction of the magnetic field in this particular one. So looking at this picture now, we can see that the thumb is pointing in line with the current, and the other fingers are moving in an anti-clockwise direction. If we were to reverse the direction of the current, the magnetic field will also swap its direction. Okay, so now the positive terminal is at the top and the negative is at the bottom. This means that the direction of the current has changed. So now our thumb is gonna point in the other direction and therefore the fingers are showing a clockwise rotation. So this is Fleming's right hand rule. Remember guys, you're only going to use your right hand for doing this. We're going to use the left hand to do another rule later on. Okay, so moving on. Let's say we took the wire and coiled it up until we got this shape. This particular shape has a special name. It's called a solenoid. So basically, a solenoid is just a straight wire that's been curled up. Now, just like before, we're going to apply a current through the solenoid. When this happens, Notice how the magnetic field produced will not be circular anymore. In fact, it will have a different shape. So the magnetic field around the solenoid looks like this. This is very similar to that of a bar magnet. Notice that I've put in arrows to show you the direction of the magnetic field. And remember, magnetic fields always point from North Pole to South Pole, which means that this side on the left must be the magnetic North Pole, and the other side on the right must be the magnetic south pole. Now, a good way to remember this is that whichever side that the current flows in from, so in this scenario, it's flowing in from the left and it's gonna be flowing out from the right. So the side that the current flows in from is the same side that the magnetic field goes out from. In other words, the positive terminal is the north pole and the negative terminal is the south pole. So what could we do to make this magnetic field that we have in a solenoid even stronger? So number one, we could increase the current or have more frequent coils. Or number three, add a soft iron core. But after doing that, number three, you will no longer have a solenoid. It will now be called an electromagnet. So that looks just like this. Here's our coil. We're going to take an iron core and the reason we're using iron is because it's an induced magnet. Place the iron inside the coil, and after that, the magnetic field of the iron and the solenoid will multiply. Now, a good thing about electromagnets is that you can control when the magnetic field is on or off. So right now, since there's no current flowing through the wire, there'll be no magnetic field. And then, as soon as you introduce a current, you get magnetic field. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, 
If you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.